This is the most state-of-the-art VR headset on the market today, and I am its newest and proudest owner. The reason I went out and got this headset is because I want to experience the worst VR games in existence. I've done other videos before about trying bad iPhone games, but I have a feeling that VR games are gonna be so much worse. Because sure, those games have had bad graphics and glitches and didn't make any sense, but imagine strapping all of those things to your eyeball. I think these games, if they're really bad, might be the worst gaming experience possible. Or maybe they'll actually be really good. I'm not actually sure. This is the first game I'm gonna play. It's called Eastwood VR. I found this game by going to Steam's VR section. I searched shooter, and then I scrolled all the way down to the bottom to find the worst reviewed game. As you can see, it says 18% of the 11 user reviews for this game are positive. Let's check out the trailer. just shoot people and fight people all in like an old western setting? That actually sounds kind of fun. Okay, you can shoot chickens, you can shoot a bunch of people at once. This game seems cool as that. Wait, who is that? What, what is that guy? Are those... You need to defeat the worst guys on the whole wild west to become the coolest cowboy ever. Every next bandit got harder reaction and shooting skill. Game has more than 10 different levels with different enemies. Okay, tell us how many levels though. More than 10 is super vague. Is it 11? Are there 11 different levels? Also, there are a few bonus levels. They have different levels and bonus levels. Also, there is multiplayer mode where you can compete with other players online. Dude, this game actually sounds sick. Why does this have such bad reviews? Bad game. It is not polished at all. Throw your pistol away and you cannot do anything else in the game. Not even restart. Okay, note to self, do not throw pistol away. Because I guess I will not be able to do anything in the game if I do. This person said, wish I knew how to get my money back. And then it says, product refunded. Guess he figured out how. And then this review says, I kind of like it for some reason. I have no clue why, but this game slaps. I wish I could remember why, but I just black out every time I play it. And when I come to, I just know that I had a good time. All right, I'm going to buy it and we're going to figure out what exactly is going on with this game. It's only $4. Why not? Now, unfortunately, I've played a few VR games before and my body is not exactly built for it. If I play in VR for too long, I get what I like to call VR fever, which is not the fun kind of fever. It's not like Bieber fever. It's the kind of fever where I get nauseous from motion sickness. So I'm gonna need to get nice and hydrated for this and I'm gonna need that hydration to be nice and fun. Luckily, I have my Air Up bottle, which is exactly that, and they're also the sponsor of this video. How perfect is that? Air Up is a whole new way to get hydrated. While you're drinking regular plain tap water, you get to experience the flavor of a variety of delectable scent pods, which you place right here. Every time you take a sip, both water and scented air are transported up into your mouth. And thanks to the science of scent-based taste, you actually experience the flavor of peach or whatever flavor you want. They have an endless array of flavors. If you ever want to drink just plain water, you can just push the scent pod down and then you can pull your scent pod back up when you want water flavored only by scent. I like my air up bottle because it's not adding any sugar or sweeteners or additives to the water. It's literally just plain water, but you end up drinking more because of the flavor. So if you want to experience air up for yourself, click the link in the description and use my code Danny. Thanks to AirUp for sponsoring this video. Now let's game. It's time to play some Eastwood VR! Entering the Wild West world of Eastwood VR, I was immediately greeted by the most aggressive NPC I've ever come across. Bitch! Oh my God. <laughs> what the hell? Such an aggressive way to start the game. Come here, you bitch! The very first thing you're supposed to do in this game is duel this guy, but for some reason, the game spawned me without hands. Right off the bat, I'm not seeing hands. Let me try restarting the game. Please give me hands. Please give me hands. Yes, okay, I have hands this time. All right, it says shoot him to enter the saloon. Is that how it worked in the Wild West? Son of a bitch. You have to shoot the bartender to enter the saloon? Now that I could actually grab my gun, it was time to use it. Oh, uh, oh! To do so, you must wait for the round to start. There's a little countdown and then a whistle. And then you have to pick up your gun and shoot him before he can shoot you. Uh, dude, this took a little bit too long to figure out, honestly. Don't know what I did wrong that time. Come here, you big fuck. Easy. Whoa! I did it! 
Let's go. Hell yeah, partner. Hey, I dropped my gun and I got it back. The review said you can't do that. Guess they were wrong. So do I want to continue or restart? Yeah, as much fun as that was, I think I'm going to want to continue. Also, that is the funniest death pose I've ever seen. Dude is face down ass up. Right. Continue. 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 So it turns out none of the menus work in this game. So I just decided I'm gonna shoot this guy and go into the saloon. Lovely, okay. So now I'm in the saloon. This is kind of fun. I am, I'm actually, I mean, it's not that bad so far. I immediately began to explore everything this saloon had to offer. And it turns out there's quite a bit. You can throw this pot up in the air. Whoa! You can stack chairs on top of each other. Ooh, dude, I wonder if I could, like, make a fort out of chairs. Probably not what the game was intended for, but... Dude, you can. Let's go. I guess it turns out to make an entertaining game for me. You don't need to program in any story or challenges. Just give me a bunch of shit I can move around. A glug, glug, glug. Do I look like I'm drinking beer? A glug, glug, glug. Okay, he didn't seem to care about that. Can I grab him? Oh! Oh, I've stunned him. What the fuck did I do? Ah, oh my God. I touched him one time. I think I killed him. I think I have the touch of death, guys. I guess the game heard I like having things to pick up and move around and answered my prayers in the most terrifying way possible. Ah, dude, this is like actually creepy. I'm holding him up with one hand. He's just like floating around. This is exhilarating. Bad boy. Holy shit, dude, this is crazy. The other patrons of the saloon didn't really seem to have much going on. Smash. Touch of death. Oh, touch of death doesn't work on him. So maybe there was just something wrong with that one guy. Maybe he had his own thing going on. He had his own demons. Don't worry about him, man. He would have done that anyway, even if you weren't there. Can I pick up this gun? And one for you? For looking at me like that? Wonder if I can steal this guy's gun. That'd be kind of fun, huh? Okay, that's funny. On the wall of the saloon, there's a list of other bandits you can duel with. Oh, okay. And I guess that's how we start them. Son of a bitch. Oh my God. This guy was equally mean, but a little bit more whispery. Son of a bitch. And about 100,000 times harder to kill. Ah. Oh my, whoa. That was so fast. Ah. What? <laughs> Dude, I can't even shoot one bullet in the time it takes for him to like shoot like 12 at me. On top of that, that zombie level that was advertised on Steam is nowhere to be found in this game. I'm kind of curious about the zombie one, but I'm actually not seeing that on here. I did, however, find the chicken game. Kill all chicks. Finally, after a stressful time in that saloon, it was time to blow off some steam. Nice done. Thank you. Your score is 1225. You are better than 0% other players. That kind of makes the nice done seem sarcastic. My favorite thing about this game is that the menus don't work. The only menu item that works in this game is this guy. And he's not even a menu item, he's just a guy. Oh, you're back? Dude, get out of here, man. Well, I thought I told you to get out of here. Hey, did you guys notice that you're all the same guy? I like that the music stopped when I said that. <laughs> it's like, okay, the music has started back up again. I feel a little bit better, but that was, that was creepy for a second there. It was like they all actually had a real human moment where they realized they were all the same guy in a video game. I still kind of think he knows the way he's looking at me. It was right about now that I started to discover just how creepy and lonely this game starts to feel the longer you play it. It turns out the last toss I gave that NPC caused him to glitch halfway through the wall. Look at this guy. He used to just be like a jolly fellow drinking in a saloon. And now he's like, now he's got this glazed over look in his eyes. His arm is like stuck through a wall at, at the atomic level. And I'm still going to keep throwing him. As I chucked him further and further into the desert outside the saloon, I got a sense for how desolate this place was. Starving for any kind of human interaction at all, I decided to reach for the last duel on the board. And global show yourself. Try it out online. Are there even other people that play this game? Like, I... Is there gonna be anyone to play against? But the fate I met in that lobby was far worse than anything I encountered in the saloon. No suitable rooms at the moment. Okay, I can host a game, see if anyone comes along. Okay, so now I guess I'm just waiting for somebody else to find this game, buy this game, and show up right in front of me so I can shoot them. Oh no. 
Oh no, I can't shoot the guy to go back in the saloon. How do I get out of here? How do I go back in the saloon? I can't move anymore. I'm stuck in this place until somebody else comes to duel me. Why does it say hello world in the sky? Come on, man. Let me go back in the saloon. Let me go back in the saloon. Next on the list, we have Bad Boy Simulator. Okay, so it looks like a game where you spend all of your time in one classroom just tormenting the teacher and students with chemical weapons. This game looks insane. Also, what is this glove? Are we playing as a super villain? I love that these two characters cough in sync. It's kind of like they're dancing to the music of the game too. They're like, all right, let's go. Yeah, everyone kind of has like in sync choreography to the the sort of chemical warfare that they're being subjected to. Were you a bully at school or vice versa? Were a diligent student and now you regret that you did not break away then properly. Do I regret not being a bully in school? Yeah, man, I was a little goody two shoes in high school. I wish I made bombs. I look back on my years as a teen and my greatest regret is that I didn't blow up my science classroom. Arrange yourself more conveniently. What does that mean? How can I arrange myself to be more convenient? Will you be able to infuriate the teacher without catching her eye and avoid the look of a classmate bastard? <laughs> what? Okay, I'm sorry, but if anyone's the classmate bastard, maybe it's the one with a super villain-esque glove making bombs in the back of the class. So the reviews for this game are mixed. Some people are loving it and some people are hating it. This one person said, I can't close the game. That sounds terrifying. What if it turns out this person like forgot to to actually put their headset on and just started doing this at school thinking they were in the game. I gotta find a way to close this game, man. I'm in too deep. It's been months. I've been expelled. I'm on the no-fly list. Can someone please tell me how to close this thing? Can someone please tell me how to stop being a bad boy? I wonder if there's a story to this game or if you just stay in this one classroom the entire time. But you know what they say, there's only one way to find out. To start this game, you go through a tutorial that teaches you a bunch of different methods you can use to prank your teacher and classmates. Put something on the bottom of the teacher's mug, throw it, and then go sit down. I don't know, okay, so is this glue maybe? Go ahead and stick that, and I'll go right back to my desk. Oh, now we get to watch the teacher discover that her mug has been glued to her desk. What is she doing? Why is she just standing there? Not really sure what happened there. My best guess is that I put too much glue on the mug and she could tell even from outside the door that she was about to be pranked. So she was sort of like angrily protesting from outside the room. A uh, one, two, three, stick it. And then I go back and sit down. Oh, here we go, dude. Here she comes. Tiniest legs in the world. <laughs> Oh, good God. Is the teacher a baby? These pranks rely heavily on distracting the teacher. That way you can cause your mischief without getting caught. You can throw a paper airplane to distract the teacher. Miss? Sometimes it doesn't work. That distracts her. I go and take the mug and I go back and sit down. Fuck you. Yeah. Oh. But I don't think any of the other distraction methods really matter because you can also freeze time. Bink. Put this on the mug, sit down, and... Yes! She is so pissed. Now that I was done with the tutorials, I could actually get into the real levels. And it looks like there are a lot, dude. One, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 30 levels. It's a little bit of quick math for you. And I'm not even in math class right now. I'm in stand class. What does that mean? Wow, look at what all these kids drew in stand class. Level one, begin. <laughs> What? Excuse me, are you alright? At first I had absolutely no clue what I was supposed to be doing during this level. Oh. I was trying to throw the banana and I took a bite out of it. Whoa, how'd I do that? I like hollowed out the peel? Did I do that with my tongue? But don't worry, I soon found these super vague instructions that I decided to follow. Level one, banana and that thing. I don't know what that thing is, but apparently putting a banana on it makes the teacher slip when she steps on it. <laughs> Oh, shit! Wait, okay. I guess that was actually what I was supposed to do. So it seems like every level is just a list of items you need to pick up from around the classroom without getting caught by the teacher. Level two, glue plus rock plus slingshot. Okay, it's really helpful that I can just freeze time in this game. That makes it so I like don't even have to distract the teacher. And then you assemble them into some sort of strange contraption that doesn't really make any sense. Okay, I'm actually not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here, but I actually, I can't pick up the soap anymore for some reason. Like, what is this? I feel like I'm supposed to be shooting the 
the soap. I can't make heads or tails of this. Everything's covered in glue. What do I do? I'm just gonna go get caught by the teacher because I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Teacher, I was um, a bad boy. Can you please put me in detention? Eventually, I figured it out, kind of. I'm still not really sure what the soap had to do with any of this, but it's a glue slingshot. <laughs> She can't figure out where it's coming from. I'm being so sneaky. This is so good. Dude, the teacher is furious. She's so mad she forgot how to hold a book. That's pretty much the whole game, honestly. It's very repetitive. And sometimes the things you have found just inexplicably disappear. Hey, where'd that stuff go? And there's only two different classes. There's math class and chemistry class. Technically a third if you count the door that just leads to a void. Oh, I have to say, man, this game did not make me feel like a bad boy. One really interesting thing about VR games is that I guess because it's so immersive, a lot of companies have created trainings for various jobs for their employees to experience in VR. The strange thing about it is that instead of being like on some private server somewhere, they're just for sale on Steam. So this one's called Truck Preparation for Driving VR Training. It is $200 and it promises to teach us how to proceed full preparation for driving of the truck with load. So they took the most fun part of being a truck driver, driving the truck, they took that out of the game, they said no. In this game, you just prepare the truck for driving. So so why does this game sound appealing to me? Why am I even the slightest bit interested in learning how to prep a truck for driving? I don't know, man. I guess I kind of just want to see if I'll learn something. Also, I kind of want to find out why this game is $200. So I'm going to try it out. Ooh. This is beautiful. Oh, right from the start, it seemed I was gonna get my money's worth from this game, as it boasted nearly three hours of training time. Come to the table. To move, point the controller to the green circle and pull the trigger. Okay, let's go over here. Take your driver's license out of your breast pocket. I showed my ID to a very unimpressed desk worker. How come this guy doesn't look happy to see me at all? What's he doing over here? All right, what Take am I supposed to do? Take a tablet with the checklist from the table Take and the Take the tablet from the checklist, right, okay. Read the documents. Oh, oh my God, it's gigantic. Why was it so small on the table? Are you seeing this, dude? It's crazy. One thing I'm starting to notice about VR is I do not like how dull and lifeless the characters are in these worlds. Look at the mechanic I meet in the garage. Look at this guy. The uncanny valley of it all just gives you this deep, unsettling feeling that you can't shake. Take the car key from the mechanic. Then go to the cabin. So I will say everything up until this point seemed like pretty self-explanatory. Like I didn't need a state of the art simulator to figure out how to walk up to a man and for him to hand me keys. And the graphics of this game are not very good. For $200, this is the most expensive game I've played so far. And these graphics suck. Also, I swear every time I look at that guy, he's like not wearing his helmet for a split second. Many of the tasks around the truck are making sure things are working properly or in good condition. And I started to realize that none of it is. This truck is in horrible condition. I'm starting to think this whole place is all torn up. This looks like a little tear here. This looks rusted out as well. When do I get to prep a good truck? Eventually I realize I can kind of just speed run this whole checklist by assuming everything is in bad condition. Daytime running lights, no. Parking lights, no. Which was especially helpful because a lot of the things on this checklist were named incorrectly. You know what? This game is all wrong, man. I gotta say, this is actually pretty disappointing. Stop lamp, safety belt. You mean seat belt? Fifth wheel coupling? I can only imagine what that is supposed to mean in real life. That's probably like the radio or something. Check for wheel chocks attached to the rear of the machine. What's a wheel chock? On the back of the machine. What machine? The truck? Is that the machine? Is he the machine? You got any wheel chocks back there, sir? Turn around. Let me see. Let me see your wheel chocks. Suddenly, all of the UI and my ability to walk around disappeared, leaving my prospects of finding these so-called wheel chocks hopeless. I tried resetting the game to see if that would fix it, but the only thing that did was erase all of my progress. Prepare the truck for driving. Come to the table. To move, point the controller to- ah! Okay, this one actually looks like it might be a little bit more entertaining. This one is called Airline Flight Attendant Simulator. Being a flight attender actually does sound kind of interesting, so I am kind of curious to see what that entails. And the graphics on this one look a little better too. Passenger evacuation. Wait, wait, why did I think this game was gonna be mostly like bringing people soda and like walking around and just doing safety checks? Okay, no, this makes sense now that I think about it. This game is about what to do in case of an emergency if you're a flight attendant. So does the game start off with the plane immediately about to crash? 
my god. Well, honestly, I kind of don't want to spoil this game too much for myself. I kind of just want to play it. Okay, this game consists of four levels and they get increasingly intense as you go. The first one is safety equipment check. It's not anything too crazy. You just walk around the plane looking in various compartments to make sure all of the required safety equipment is there. We need 20 child belts, but look, there's only 15 child belts. Guess some children aren't going to be uh, joining us today. We're gonna have to strap them to the bottom of the plane. The next level is where things started to heat up, literally. Oh, there's people on the plane now, dude. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to my flight. Well, sir, welcome to my flight. I'm glad that everyone on this flight is an adult. Not a single child on here. That's good because we are going to be going down. You look familiar. Has anyone ever told you you look just like that guy? And has anyone furthermore told you that you look just like that guy? There's a series of steps you have to follow to a T in order to put out the fire correctly. And if you do any of them wrong or you don't do them quick enough, you fail. But the Ooh, whoa, cool. All right, I'm wearing the smoke. Oh. All right, that time I wasn't even goofing around. I was being dead serious that time. That's okay. We need to learn how to do this first, I guess. And then once I know how to do it, I'm gonna be able to speed through this lickety split. And speed through it lickety split I did. Once I had the instructions down, I was opening the door. I was extinguishing the fire. I was pouring water on it. What? Oh, okay, yeah, I did fail that time. I forgot a few steps. And the source of the fire hasn't been inspected, but I did eventually get it. How did I do? The source of the... What? Kind of. It's been inspected. Oh, it says mission passed anyway. Okay. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, who really needs to inspect the source of the fire at the end of the day? The passengers can do that. Okay, aircraft depressurization. This one, I could not figure out, man. You're just standing around when suddenly the airplane depressurizes. You have to put on a mask. Oh, ah! Okay. Okay, that's on. And then you have to go make sure that the pilots are okay. Hey guys, uh, everybody stay calm. But they don't answer the phone in the cockpit. I know, not good. So the game instructs you to go in there and help them. If there's no response, get into the cockpit by entering the code one, two, three, four, five, red. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Red? Enter? What's red? One, two, three, four, five. And mission failed, time is over, the aircraft is not descending. What was I supposed to do? So I don't know if this is just a bug with the game or something, but that code does not work. It does not get you into the cockpit. I replayed this level over and over. I did it so many times, it was like Groundhog Day to me. Watch guys, the aircraft is gonna depressurize. We're all gonna be screwed. Check this out, ready? Three, two, one. Yep, see, I knew it. Yeah, you guys are all scared and screaming, but I knew the whole time. Enter, 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 enter. Let me enter, please. Please, let me enter. I have to save the pilot. They need my help in there. Why am I, oh, why does it look like I'm like caressing the door handle also? <laughs> okay, this one sounds like it's gonna be the most intense one of them all. Emergency landing and evacuation. And it was intense, dude. The first few instructions are just things you're supposed to scream at the passengers as the plane goes down. Brace. Brace, heads down, stay down. Brace, brace. Release your seatbelt. Stay in your seat. Life vest under your seat. Put it on. I kind of immediately forgot what the chants were the second the level started. Brace, brace. Keep, keep your head down. Stay down. I guess I was just so nervous because the plane was about to crash. But I think they got the gist. Oh, okay. That's impact. Very scary. Very scary indeed. Passenger evacuation. Okay. Here we go. Next step. Release your seatbelt. Stay in your seat. Life vest under your seat. Put it on. Oh, they are. Okay. They all already have it on. Okay. So next. Now it was time to get everybody safely off the plane and into the ocean. Whoa, dude. This is crazy. Hey, guys. That's not. You no, no, no. No, don't do that. I don't think you're supposed to do that. Are you? Everyone's. Isn't everyone supposed to get on this thing? Where are you going? We're in the ocean. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Okay. It's a task. I was like, I was just gonna float away and then, oh, hello. Got these two clones lined up, ready to go. Okay, right here. Oh, okay, there they all go. Wow, they, seems like they all really know how to do this. Has this happened to you guys before? Check the entire cabin for any passengers left inside. There better not be anybody still on this. Oh my God, dude, get up, get up. Inflate the life vest, get up, go. <laughs> What am I supposed to say? Excuse me. I got to admit, it was pretty fulfilling to help all of these scared passengers off of the plane in a calm manner. And oh, fuck, I have to get in the cockpit again. I hope the pilots are alive. L literally everybody else lived. So it would be kind of a bummer if they didn't make it. One, two, three, four, five, enter. Oh, it worked this time. All right. 
Hey guys, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the plane did crash. So just wanted to let you know. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, you're good. And you as well, are you? Are you good? Oh, okay. Perfect. No, don't get your hands off the steering wheel. We're not gonna, we're not in the air anymore. We crashed. Get your hands off the steering, please. Now that I had rescued everybody else on the plane, it was time to rescue myself. A jump, a jump. Mission failed. This last one, I kind of have a complicated reason for picking, but I think it's interesting. This game is, I think, one of the most popular VR games you can play right now. It's called Gorilla Tag. I'd never heard of it before researching this video, but it seems very popular. Here we find a most curious creature moving on two paws, able to traverse great distances. So it seems like a multiplayer VR experience where you play as a gorilla who inexplicably does not have legs. I don't know if they all just escape from some kind of laboratory where they were being experimented on or something, but none of the gorillas have legs. And also, instead of like using the joystick to walk around, you like swing your arms like an actual gorilla walking around, which seems super annoying, honestly. But this game has very positive reviews. 93% of the reviews for this game are positive, but I read through some of them and it gave me a little bit of pause. Positive review. View. This is the reason I do not want to have kids. Positive review. Kids call you racist stuff, but you will get used to it. Positive review. Dislocated my finger in real life. I think what I'm getting at here is that the game itself is well designed and fun to play, but because it's a multiplayer game, the other people on the app, being mostly children, make the game a terrible experience. At least I think that's the case, but I want to check it out for myself. Is this actually a good game or do the clientele ruin it. You start out in a cave learning to walk as a gorilla for the first time. This walking mechanic is very annoying and would only continue to get more annoying as the game went on. Also, I'm not sure why the game is third person in this recording. When I was playing, I was in first person as the gorilla. So this is what a gorilla's hands look like. But as you emerge from the cave, you are greeted by hundreds of children. Oh. Give up. Whoa, suddenly I can hear people. Hey, uh, hi, I'm new here. I, uh, I don't know how this game works. Can anybody help me? Yeah, yeah I will. Yeah. I will. Where are you? Jump down. These children were immediately so eager to teach me how to play. They also turned me into lava. I'm still not sure what that means. Wait, what did you do to me? You're did lava. They swarmed me like a pack of feral wolves and immediately started asking me questions and showing me how to do things. This is kind of overwhelming. Did, 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 did you already know how to run? Did you already know how to run? So you know how to run like that? to the ground like this. They wanted to show me how to run, how to throw balloons. They wanted to feed me hot dogs. Ah, mm, thank you. Mm, such, so hospitable, thank you. So overall, most of them were pretty nice. There was this one gorilla who kept asking me to change his color code in a very intimidating way. You take off my color code? What? You take off my color code? I don't know. I don't know what that means. This guy was weird. He also made me do a bunch of tests to make sure I was really new and I wasn't just faking it. Press this right here. Ooh, hats. Press right here. Put on. Press right here. Put on. Okay, you're actually new. Oh, you thought I was just, you thought I was razzing you? You thought I was messing with you? I wouldn't joke about that kind of thing. Do you wanna know how a real man does it? Yeah, show us how a real man does it. Bro. A real man do it like this. Whoa! That's a real man. While I was being taught how a real man runs up a wall, I was told that the $1,000 meta headset I bought to play all of these games was actually the worst possible one I could have used. For some reason, I feel like it's like my hand is just not sticking in the wall. What are you playing on, Oculus or Steam? On Steam, with the like the Quest uh, Pro. So you, you have about 85 hertz. Hertz. Okay. So your hands are not as sticky as the Oculus players. Wait, what did you get, the Pro? Yeah, oh, but I'm playing it on Steam. What the hell, Steam? And Mark? My gaming setup is too good for Gorilla Tag? How fucked up is that? Once the Gorilla children had cooled down a bit and started to go back to doing their own thing, I asked my friend here if there was anything else to do in this game. Are there like mini games in this game or like what is there to... What is there to do? He decided he should take me under their wings slash monkey arms and teach me their favorite game. Let's teach him how to play monkey on the shelf. Okay, um, let's go. Here. Now jump on the computer. Okay. Now coin, join code, Joe Mama. Monkey on a Shelf is a don't touch the lava type game where you try to make it from one end of the room to the other without touching the floor. I kind of thought there would be mini games like programmed into this game, but there is no structure at all. They just like pick one monkey to watch and make sure people don't touch the floor. While we played, 
we got to talking about some of the negative things people had to say about this game. Are there a lot of racists in this game? The review said that like every, like it was just a bunch of racist little kids. Yes. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. <laughs> Did they get banned? Of these report. Uh, sometimes. Before I knew it, it was time for me to log off. All right, guys, I gotta go. But can I just say? Yeah, nice knowing you. Can I just say thank you guys for taking what? me under your wing and teaching me how to play this game. I, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you guys. You're welcome. You guys are the coolest monkeys I've ever met. Yep. All right, bye. Well, Greg, there you have it. The world of VR is a magical and mysterious place that I am proud to have explored here with you today. If you have any other games you want me to check out, let me know. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Otherwise, go ahead and check out another video right here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, bye bye